I made a video a year and a half ago talking about how Starlink was focused on improving the performance of partially obstructed dishes. So a lot of you live in areas with trees where you can't exactly have a clear view of the sky. You've got too many trees, and even with the dish placed at the peak of your roof, you still get some small obstruction areas that impede the Starlink's field of view and can cause uh, minor interruptions. In that video, I talked about how Starlink was making some pretty big promises to improve obstructed dish performance. So all this time later, what have they done and have they actually improved obstructed performance? In this video, we're gonna be talking about a recent update that Starlink posted and their beam switching technology that they say is the solution to all of these problems. And let's start off with talking about what beam switching is exactly. And if you think about it, it's been around for Starlink really since the beginning, it's kind of a necessary core functionality of their service because Starlink satellites orbit the earth at around 17,000 miles per hour. So they're constantly zipping overhead and your dish is only connected to a single satellite for a very short amount of time before it has to be handed off because the original satellite goes out of field of view of your dish. So this switching back and forth between satellites, that's really what it comes down to with beam switching. The key is trying to make that transition as quick as possible and unnoticeable to the end user so that your connection appears to be completely stable and constant, even though the connection is switching from one satellite to another satellite to another satellite all the time, even with a clear view of the sky. Now with beam switching as it relates to obstructions, that's where it gets a little bit more interesting. And that's where a lot of improvements have been made in terms of Starlink's beam switching technology. One of the big things that we've learned in that blog post from Starlink is that every Starlink dish in the United States has tens of satellites within its field of view. That's a lot of satellites that it could potentially switch to if needed to deal with obstructions. And a lot of that has to do with all the recent launches that have happened to bring Starlink's active satellite count up to around 8,000. A year and a half ago when I posted the original video, we only had around 5,000 satellites to work with. The more satellites that are in service, the more options that your dish has to switch to in case of obstructions. Another thing that we learned from the article is that Starlink has basically two kinds of beam switching modes. They have a reactive beam switching mode and a proactive mode. With reactive, that mainly applies to mobile Starlink applications. Like if you have a Starlink dish mounted to the roof of your vehicle and you're driving down the highway, that reactive mode, as the name kind of implies, it's reacting to obstructions as they happen and it's not in a predictive format. So for example, if you're driving down the road and you go underneath some trees, those obstructions are unexpected for your Starlink, but as soon as Starlink notices a degradation in that satellite link, it's gonna automatically switch to another available satellite. And Starlink says these switches can happen in as little as a 10th of a second. So they're basically imperceptible to the user and these can happen multiple times per minute to get around those obstructions. So reactive beam switching is a reaction to an obstruction that happens. And this can also apply to stationary Starlink dishes when you first power them on. Like for example, when you're camping. When you're camping, you go and you set up your dish, it's not moving, but when you first power it on in a new location, your dish does not understand where it's at. It doesn't have the environment mapped out yet. So it's relying on that reactive beam switching to try to manage those obstructions that are popping up. The other type of beam switching is proactive. And that's more interesting to me because this is what Starlink has really been improving on and upgrading their algorithms to handle obstructions better, specifically for fixed Starlink installations, like what you have on the roof of your home. So with proactive beam switching, it's super interesting because it takes data from your environment as it learns it over the first hours and days that you power on your Starlink and it builds an obstruction map. This obstruction map can be viewed in the app. If you go to your Starlink app, go to obstructions, you can actually see this, this obstruction map. Areas in red are where things like trees and buildings are obstructing your satellite's view, and areas that are blue have successfully connected to Starlink satellites. So the data from this obstruction map, which Starlink says can take up to a week to generate, is used to proactively avoid satellites that your Starlink dish knows will be obstructed due to trees or whatever. 
In other words, with proactive beam switching, your Starlink dish is now smart. It knows the environment that it's in, it knows where your obstructions are, and it will actively avoid using satellites that will be obstructed. It will instead schedule one of those alternate satellites, one of the tens of satellites that Starlink says is in view at all times. It will schedule that ahead of time before the handoff even happens so that there's basically no interruption at all due to the obstruction. Proactive beam switching is the key to kind of helping with those partial obstructions for fixed installations. So if you have trees that you can't seem to get far enough away from or above, proactive beam switching will help you deal with that on an ongoing basis by learning your environment and then actively avoiding that area. So if you've been avoiding Starlink, maybe you tried it two or three years ago and couldn't deal with all the outages due to obstructions from trees around your property, I would advise you to give Starlink another shot because things have drastically improved since about a year and a half ago since they've introduced this proactive beam switching. And all of these upgrades that I've talked about, all the additional satellites that have come into play have increased average uptime even for partially obstructed dishes. So things have definitely improved and I've seen that through comments on social media, reports from my viewers and other sources that tell me that their obstruction outages, their interruptions have gotten shorter and shorter and shorter over the years. And that's all thanks to the beam switching technology. Now with all of that said, all the good things about beam switching, it doesn't mean that having a clear view of the sky is no longer important. In fact, it's still optimal, it's still best practice to have a completely clear view of the sky and to avoid any obstructions at all if possible. You should still use the Starlink app, the obstruction scanner, to scan potential mounting locations and try to find an area that doesn't have any red on your obstruction map. That's still critical for the optimal performance for your Starlink dish. What beam switching does is just help manage those unavoidable obstructions that many of you may have due to trees or buildings or whatever that you just can't seem to get around. That's where beam switching comes into play, but it is not a fix all solution. It's not going to solve the most severe obstructions. Okay, so now that we've talked about what beam switching is and some of the basics of it and the different modes, I've been seeing a lot of common questions, misconceptions, misinformation, and confusion online since Starlink posted this beam switching article. So I wanted to kind of address some of those. The most common question that I've been seeing is how do I get this beam switching technology? Is it a new dish that I have to buy? Is it a setting that I have to turn on? And the great news is that everything is automatic. Everything is taken care of for you. Beam switching is a completely automatic thing that's built into every Starlink dish. Every Starlink dish has it. Every Starlink plan has it. It's just a basic inherent part of the Starlink network. It just works. So you don't have to worry about turning on a setting or buying new hardware or anything. Just know that as of right now, as you're watching this video, your dish is currently enjoying this beam switching technology, both the reactive and proactive mode if it's stationary, and you're getting those benefits. Now, like I said before, if you have severe obstructions, it might not be perfect. You might not have that 99.9% .9 uptime that Starlink says is possible with beam switching, even with partial obstructions, but it is still benefiting you. You are seeing reduced obstruction outages from two or three years ago. So what does the future hold for beam switching technology? Well, as Starlink continues to launch more and more satellites, the constellation will grow and that just means more options to switch to for your Starlink dish. The more density of satellites that are orbiting overhead, the more options that you have to route the traffic around those obstructions to free and clear satellites that you can have a more stable and high performance connection. Starlink will continue to improve those beam switching algorithms to make those satellite switches even more imperceptible and unnoticeable, even in activities like live video calls, online gaming, etc. So that's the video. Now I wanna hear from you though. Have you noticed any of these changes over the years? Those of you that have tall trees around or use Starlink for camping, have you noticed over the last year and a half or so those obstructions getting better and better and better? Or are you having the opposite experience? Are you still having trouble with some of those trees? Let me know in the comments below. I'll chat with you there. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't already and hit the like button. That helps us with the YouTube algorithm. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.